Modifying your cap and ball revolver to take conical bullets. Okay, here's a <coughs> Johnson and Dow uh, conical bullet. Errors gone by bullet molds. This guy makes exact copies of what was used originally back then. Now, with our cap and ball revolvers, you know, and we're just talking about reproductions. I'm not talking about using originals. You have all these different guns. <clears throat> this is uh, 1851 Navy, made by Pieta, and I bought this from Cabela's, I said, less than five years ago. I have a Euro Arms, Spencer's, and Rogers that I bought back in the 90s. These are no longer made, uh, but well-made gun nonetheless. Then I have this Army 1860 that I believe this does say, yep, Euro Arms on it, but because of this grip with the dice, uh, I believe this may have been a Century Arms or some company had these imported under Euro Arms. And I'm going to say that this gun was made back in the 70s, maybe early 80s. So uh, you will find the guns vary from manufacturer over time in the years. They are close copies to the exact Colts, but they're not exact to the, you know, within thousandths of an inch type of detail. And I'll show you why. Um, <clears throat> so irregardless what you have, what time period or whatever, we're just going to go about, we're going to take a look at how the guns are set up and what you'll have to change to kind of load these odd conical shaped bullets correctly. And it's going to be one of two things. I'll give you a generalization. It's going to be the area of the barrel down in here. We're in the frame, barrel frame area. This area is going to have to be enlarged because everyone tells you, you know, like on this pistol, <coughs> the shape is cut out but it's not formed. You're going to have to modify it so the bullet can get around. You're going to have to sculpt it a bit. And that's what we're going to do. And the second thing is the ram. When you pull down the ram here, this piece in here, it comes and rams the bullet. It has to be cut out more or less like a, uh, in other words, to form the shape of the pointed conical bullet. Most of them are just a simple short concave for a round ball. Well that's going to interfere with the nose of the bullet. So those are the two things we're going to work on um, and we're going to discuss that here. Alright, this is the 1851 Navy made by Pieta, marketed by uh, Cabela's. And if you look uh, the close up here, this chamfer. Now this is machined in here. The newer guns, regardless of the, the company, they're very competitive and they want to make the guns to where you would want to buy their product. Now we're going to use this Richmond Laboratory bullet. I'm going to index this around. And that's about where you'd want to load it. Now, this is 36 caliber. So, what you want to do is you want that bullet to more or less drop down and get started in the cylinder. Ah, like that. That's what you want. And you want to be able to rotate it around so it gets up, it clears the frame, gets in there, and then your ram can uh, come down. Now, the problem with this one is the ram. The frame is all set. We don't have to modify it to use a bullet, and I don't have the other bullet mold yet that uses the Colt style in 36 caliber, which would be very similar to this. But the ram is the problem. I tried modifying it a little, but the best thing to do with this is to buy a Uberti ram and then take the 
Pieta ram out and it would be drilled and machined so it would not flatten the nose of the bullet because the whole point of getting a special bullet is the shape. So now we'll look at uh, a couple others with our 44 cal caliber bullet. Here's our 1860 model that is done and we'll take our 44 caliber bullet and as you see there's no way it's hitting the frame and it's not even close to dropping in so we kind of have to move this about or whatever you see the, the frame is to where this won't even fit to get it in to the cylinder okay you have to kind of line it up once it gets inside there we'll do it this way we'll get it in and then drop it down hold on a second well let's do it this way. we'll look at it the problem is that the bullet is hitting along this edge in here, this contour, and this is all sticking out too far. You're supposed to be able to seat that out here. So this is the edge that's giving us the problem right in here. So we'll work on that first and get it to where we relieve this enough to where the bullet can slide over all the way and drop down in. And then we'll see what this here looks like. Okay, but that's basically the problem. Okay, with our Rogers and Spencer's pistol, there is room to where you can rotate this around and get that bullet to drop down out there. That's what you want. Okay, the Colt, we're going to have problems with that. But when you rotate this around, you will see that you have all kinds of clearance here but we're hitting a little bit here okay so this gun is close and this gun has had relieves relief areas cut in instead of a sharp edge like on the Colt so what we'd have to do with this is just kind of file that a little in there so it see where it hits I mean very little material you could get by probably but I'd rather have it go through clean so not much in terms of getting this gun to work but the problem is the ram the ram is rounded um, <clears throat> so and the gun is no longer made and it is a Rogers and Spencer's the Colt ram will not go in here okay it's a totally different design pistol so we may have to either fabricate a ram or modify that ram and since the guns are no longer made I really don't want to go messing with the original part I'd rather try to have one made up so the Rogers and Spencers we're not going to fool with we're going to set it aside we're going to work on getting the Colt to uh, take the bullet All right, we have our gun apart and basically what we want to do is you see where this sharp square edge is we want to file this back and blend this back much similar to the other thing I'm going to put this in a padded vise and we use files now having the right tool for the job okay this file's too big and too coarse. Files of this size and you have to have an assortment of files. This is the correct file that we're going to work to get in there and start working on it. These little tiny files you know they would work but you know your surface area you could do it either or. I'm going to do the majority of the cutting with this larger one and then you can use the smaller one to finish up. And now these guns are a blued finish so what you would do is like I said we're going to start wearing the sharp edge and we want to get the sharp edge down and kind of looking at it this way with this corner we want to take the corner down 
and blend it out so the bullet has clearance. I'm hoping I won't have to get up into this area. We'll just try cutting it here, maybe a little there. And the idea is take our time, I'll make a cut, put the pistol back together, try to rotate a bullet over, and just keep gently doing it. And once I get the shape started and show you this with the bluing, it'll be easier to see where the bare metal is. Okay, one thing to do is take some material off, put the gun back together, put it in a stand, and look down. And you can see where this whole section here, there's a, there's a big area here, right in here, is going to have to come off. It's overhanging the cylinder, and that's what's keeping the ball from going in. So right at that point there, it's like all the way back here to here. I'm going to have to take that edge down. These guns are actually sculpted a lot better and shaped better uh, than um, what this is. This is more or less just squared off. So there's going to be a lot of material. Usually, <clears throat> like with the Rogers and Spencers, they cut this back enough. But this here, I can see it. This, this area right here is going to have to be taken back. Even, even in this position here to load it, this is still hanging over a good chunk of it. Um, so what we're looking at, we'll take a look at the other one. Alright, what they did when they cut this huge chamfer <clears throat> into the frame, you can look down and you can see where there's room for the uh, ball to drop in there. Okay, it's, it's cut back. So I kind of got an idea of what I have to remove. I'm using this as an example. I don't have to get too overzealous. I just got to get that chamfer back in there and kind of match it up like that. This is kind of what I got so far with the Colt. I think what I should do is take more off of this back edge to give the bullet room. Change my angle a little with the file. I mean, slow going, but you got more control other than just don't try going in there with a Dremel tool and grinding a piss out of it. Okay, after a few hours worth of work, I must admit I had to get a Dremel tool and grind into there. There was an awful lot of material that had to come out. But we've got it to the point now where if we take the Johnson and Dow bullet and flip it up. It will clear in this loading area to where I can load it. Uh, I really don't want to take no more off, but it's good enough to wear and then we can spin it around, it doesn't hit anything, and then ram it down. It's a tight fit uh, with a paper cartridge, but I had to take a lot of material out of this the way they machine this, they just like made the frame a certain shape, really didn't contour it as much, maybe, I'm not sure, I don't have another example to compare, and just milled straight across. And what happened is out in here, this section of the barrel, and it had to be thinned when I, I'm going to go and polish this and then I'll show you what I removed, then it's blatantly obvious, but a lot of material had to come out of there to get this bullet to go in there. All right, so in the end here, <clears throat> this job was a little bit worse than I thought it would be. I had to remove a lot of material out of there. And the way this thing was, uh, this was squared off. You know, this whole area, this is almost as square as this. And I mean, I had to take a lot out. I had to contour it inside there and get that thin around where the uh, thing goes. I had to remove a lot of material to get that bullet to drop in 
because it kept hitting in this area right here. This this was sticking way out. And uh, so I had to contour this. And now I got it to where that bullet can drop in there and swing around. Uh, as for the outside, you know, again, these modifications. Once I blew that with cold blue, you really won't notice it. I did have to take part of the, come close to the, <coughs> where the wedge goes. So, there was a lot of material taken off, but the bullet will go in there now. So now, after we've done this, this is my first attempt, I am going to make sure that a gun is already modified or the bullet will fit in it before I buy it. I really don't like, like doing this. I had a Dremel tool in that. So now we're going to do the reblue. <coughs> Not so much of a big deal. Get back a ways, camera up. I've already degreased it. So it's just a matter, I'm going to take a torch and then heat this up a little. We're going to use our paste, ortho blue paste, because uh, I kind of like this stuff because I got control of it. I can, see, just squeeze it out of the top, use a Q-tip and apply it and go from there. Alright, so let me, I'm going to heat the part, I ain't going to show you that. Okay, so I heated the part up somewhat. Now we're going to apply cold blue to the area, touch it up. Oh yeah, when you heat that up, that goes on quick. And hopefully this touch up We should be good as new when I'm done. Hopefully I didn't, didn't really do anything to the barrel. Scuffed it up a little. But nothing, nothing horrible. There we go. Kind of leave that on there. Get a rag and wipe it off. All right, they tell you to wipe it off in one straight movement, but I don't know how we're going to do that. With a piece like this. Actually came out fairly good on the first shot. Not too bad. Not too shabby. I like this this uh This ortho blue paste here uh, come out okay. And yes, when I heated it, heated it with the torch like they suggested, and I touched that stuff on there, I mean, it instantly started turning black. Okay, so adding a little heat probably is, you know, when guys say it, but it looks like it's a good deal. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to, now what I'm going to do is the same thing, I'm going to wipe, I wiped it off with a rag here, wipe the paste off, 
I'm going to put a little heat on it. Then I'm going to recoat it again. Okay, guys, recoat it again. Get back away. I'm going to recoat this again. Maybe get two or three coats on there. Um, <clears throat> let me get the cylinder. The cylinder. When we did the little cut out there, we put the uh, super blue on, and we fired this gun. And that bluing is held up pretty good, so I'm thinking for a touch-up job, this will come out okay. Alright, so that's what I'm not going to show you that. I'm going to repeat the steps I just did about three times, then we'll take a look. Okay, so there's our finished product. After I got done. Put three coats of the paste on, and it kind of matched that up now. Nobody really know. So that's why I kind of perfected it, and <clears throat> I did notice heating the part helps the, the finish take a little better. So now, uh, I'm going to just hose everything down with some oil. Leave it here on the right. All right, then maybe we will come back. I'm going to let this set for a while. I'm going to wipe it down, reassemble it, and we'll see how it looks. Uh, and do a recap of this. Okay, so there we have the project finished. You know, unless you knew, you really can't tell. It doesn't look too odd. But I can get the bullet in. And a matter of fact, I have one that I went and squish down in and you see that that ram makes a difference just leaves a ring but it doesn't flatten the point uh, on there so this one's ready to roll as is so maybe if we get out tomorrow we'll take this out and see if I can pop a few rounds off now what that is going to do to the strength of this I really don't think it would affect it much. The original ones had the big groove, but you can see the difference of what I had to cut out there as compared to what was factory cut. Okay, big difference. And if you look in them books and anybody telling you how to make the paper cartridges or use the conical bullets, you're going to probably have to modify the gun. Okay, because these old guns here with the way they just machine that in there, they ain't going to hack it. You're not going to get the bullet in there. Okay, so, and like I said, I may look into or try to get some close-ups of photographs of a new birdie uh, 1860 and see if they have that enlarged enough in there. All right, so that's it for the modification. The only thing we can do now is take her out, give it a try.